Good morning or good afternoon everybody. The Lord be with you. Beth and David here uh, doing uh, your weekly assembly this week. And as always at the beginning of our assembly I'm going to light a candle. We light a candle to remember that God is with us, that Jesus is the light of the world and that he shines throughout all that we do in our school and in our lives. I'm going to leave that candle burning just behind me as we have spend our time together to remind us of that. So, you probably know by now that we're in the Easter season of church. For 40 days after Easter, we continue to celebrate that great festival. And in those 40 days of Easter, one of the things that the church does is it reads from the Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles is the fifth book in the New Testament. It's the book that comes after Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, the four Gospels or four stories of Jesus' life. The Acts of the Apostles is exciting for me because it tells the story of the early church. What the church was like 2,000 years ago. What the church was like for those first followers of Jesus. One of the reasons I like that is because it, it seems very like what the church is like today. We realise that some of the problems that face them then face us now. Some of the joys that face us now are the, the same things that made, made them joyful at the same time. On Sunday we heard a story. This story is about a chap called Philip, who's one of the disciples, one of those 12 followers of Jesus. And it's a story about Philip walking along and coming across a chariot. And in this chariot is, a, is a, somebody he's never met before. It's somebody who is a court official in the Ethiopian Empire. The Ethiopian Empire. Now some of you may have heard of Ethiopia. Some of you may have even, might even be able to tell me where it is on a map. Modern day Ethiopia is a much smaller country than Ethiopia would have been in Bible times. Ethiopian Bible times would have encompassed quite a large chunk of what we now think of northeast Africa. So this court official from the court of Candace, who was queen of the Ethiopians at that time, he's travelling on the road and he's reading from the prophet Isaiah. This court official meets Philip and says, I'm reading about this Isaiah, but I don't know who this person that Isaiah keeps on talking about is. Isaiah's talking about this Messiah, this person who is to come, who is this person? So Philip gets in alongside the, this Ethiopian official and he explains the story. He explains all about the life of Jesus and how he fulfills the prophecy that Isaiah has written about. This Ethiopian official is so impressed that he decides at that moment he wants to be baptised. Baptism is the way that we enter the Christian family. Some people do it as young people, but some other times people do it as adults. It's a way of committing yourself to being a follower of Jesus. And this official from Ethiopia wants to uh, follow Jesus too after hearing Philip's word. So Philip gets out of the chariot, they find some water and baptises this Ethiopian official. So why did I want to talk, talk tell you this story this morning? Well, partly because it sort of reminds us that one thing that Christians like to do is to talk about the stories that they know about faith and to share those with people who might not otherwise understand them. It's one of the reasons I come and do things, do these stories for you week by week, along with Reverend Sue and Anna, to help you understand those stories a bit more deeply. But particularly I wanted to share that story today because of the Ethiopian official. Quite often, uh, when we look in our Bibles and pictures, we only see uh, white faces. We only see people who look a little bit like uh, look look a little bit like me. We don't tend to see people with black faces or brown faces. And I'm not quite sure why that is, because right there in the heart of the Bible, we have a story about Philip, who'd probably been a Middle Eastern man, uh, slightly um, slightly uh, darker skin than me. Um, but he's talking to an Ethiopian official who would almost certainly have been black. These stories are there in our Bible, and why do we not tell the stories about the black people we find in the Bible? 
Why do we imagine that all the characters in the Bible are white people? Sometimes we need to, as a church and as Christians, to think about the way that we tell our stories. To remember that there's stories there about uh, stories there of all sorts of different people. Not just people who are like us and live in places like us, but people who are very different to us. This is a bit like the worldwide church today. The worldwide church is made up of many different people, different languages, different countries, all looking very different. We can begin to think that the church only looks like the church we see in our village or in our town or wherever we live. But actually the reality of the church is it's a much more diverse place than that. One of the great things about our school is the fact that we have a diverse school. We have children of all different ages for a start. We have children of different, uh, different genders. We have children who've come from all sorts of different places. Some people whose families have lived locally for a long time and other people whose families have come from far away. Some people who, look, uh, who have white skin like me are the people who have different skin. But at the end of the day, we're one school. We're one group of people trying to learn. One group of children playing in the, play, play, play in the playground, playing sports against each other and enjoying each other's company. Those differences don't really matter in some ways. But if we start to write out some people's stories and we forget about this Ethiopian court official who decides that they want to be a follower of Jesus and is baptised, we're not telling the whole story. Sometimes in school we think about Black History Month and we listen to stories uh, about um, uh, black people in history. Sometimes people we don't necessarily listen to history-wise. I'm hoping that at some point you'll find out about Equiano, a very interesting person who lived in Soham for some time and married a woman from Fordham. I wonder what you'll find out about him at some stage. Our history is not uniform and there's lots of stories there. Let's make sure we hear lots of different stories to rejoice in the diverse world that God has made. So, I've come to our end of our assembly now, and it's time to be quiet together and to say a prayer. So try to be quiet and still. Maybe looking at the candle will help you to be quiet and still. Maybe putting your hands together and closing your eyes will help you be quiet and still. So we give thanks for our school and for all that we learn in this place, for the stories we hear and for the things we learn about our world. We thank you for the rich diversity of our school and for all that we can celebrate. We thank God for the gift of the church, for those of us who have been baptised for that gift of baptism. And we pray that God will protect us and all those whom we love. And so we join our prayers together, Christians all over the world, in the words Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And final prayer. So I pray that God will bless each one of you, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bye for now.